I keep saying, you know, like we we were born too late really to explore the Earth, and we're too early to explore space, but we're just at the right time to explore our brains and our minds, and VR is an amazing uh, tool for that. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are on site at Consciousness Hacking's Awaken Future Summit. We are now speaking to Sarah Hashkis. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really Thank appreciate it. I love it. the word simulation. So. Nice. Okay, well, then we're going to have a great conversation, especially at the end. Uh, Sarah is the co founder of Radix Motion, and they're merging our realities with VR. And I just got, I just tried their product called Mew, and it was so cool, an embodied messenger platform. I was just basically in a state of, we have a video to embed here, where I was mm -hmm. m being mirrored. My position in a virtual environment was being mirrored by an avatar that was, I was constantly dancing with it and mirroring with it, but then there was all of this, you can describe this really well, but... <laughs> All of this cool pieces, uh, sparkle motion. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to this. Okay, Sarah, who are you? What do you represent? Who represent? Um, I guess I represent a set of memes that you know I've been lucky enough to collect, um, and are so some like get rid of others. <laughs> Filter, right? Filtered set of memes. Um, around um, neuroscience. I come from a cognitive neuroscience and a lot of movement. I've done martial arts my whole life. It's a really, really uh, big part of helping me and being who I am and having all this like self-confidence to try really strange things. Um, and combining these these two loves of like movement and technology and brains, I sort of came into VR as the most amazing medium to create my own realities and be the god of my own world, right? Oh, we're gonna have such a good conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When I first took off mute your your program, I was just like, what am I doing back here? I was just playing God in this world. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So um, teach us about the cognitive science and martial arts background. Um, so I guess cognitive science, I did a master's program, Donders University. Uh, I was actually researching psychedelics. Um, and that's I, I published a paper uh, around um, the predictive coding framework explaining what psychedelics does to your brain. If anybody's into any type of brain hacking or meditation, any type of practice around this brain, I highly recommend reading a little bit about predictive coding. Predictive coding. Predictive coding. Can yeah. you teach us about that? Yeah. So predictive coding looks at your brain as a prediction machine. Um, that it doesn't have any access to the outside world, your brain, right? You don't know what's out there. <laughs> the only information your brain is getting is coming from your sensory inputs, your eyes, your ears. Um, but what is actually happening according to predictive coding is that this source of information coming from your senses is getting combined with your previous knowledge, right? And that's sort of the key part and what makes it sort of different from other theories is the understanding this combination. So even when you're looking, let's say, at a cat, you're not just seeing that cat. You're seeing all the cats that you've ever seen before, including all the emotional experiences you've had with all of the cats you've seen before. They're all combining into your sense of perception at that moment. Um, so you're, this whole being in, in the now thing, when we talk about this, or being present, might be reducing the previous knowledge that you have of cats in order to s just be present with your sensory infor information that's currently happening. So there's, again, this constant balance between these two sources of information. Um, and you can play with this in any type of practice. With meditation, you can start playing with, again, probably being present more and reducing your priors um, and your previous knowledge. Or you could do the opposite, right? You could do the type of loving kindness meditation that goes into maybe these loving memories that you have uh, and expands them and recreates them and helps um, strengthen these pathways in your brain. So there's various types of things you can do once you start understanding this framework. Um, and a lot of info in this framework goes around um, um, this minimal, minimal self. How are we actually one being? There's 80 billion neurons in there, <laughs> more billions of cells going on, um, and yet we form a type of agent. Um, 
And the theory is that it's based on statistical correlation of these signals. So once signals get statistically correlated, the best explanation your brain can come up with is like, oh, it's coming from a one, one thing, this one thing. Um, and this is where the sense of self sort of comes from. And you can really play with it. Have you ever tried the rubber hand experiment? Teach me what's a rubber hand. Right. So I put a rubber hand on top of your hand. Okay. Let, let's say let's I can we can try it. It won't really work, okay. but let's say we do something like this, right? Okay. And this is a rubber hand, and I touch you at the same time that I'm touching my hand, right? That so feels really like that. weird already. Yeah. yeah so it feels yeah. super weird, and what happens is your brain starts believing that my hand is your hand because Oh, I remember this seeing, video when right. they had it with the little divider. The divide. Yeah. Yeah, I remember So this, this is one way, a very simple way to show how plastic your sense of self is. If I can transplant a fake rubber hand and you think it's yours, right? And with virtual reality, we can start playing with that so much. We have, you know, an, another experience we built where you have tentacles instead of arms. We're working on having like a tail. So I can start really playing with this sense of bodily self that you have Whoa. and let you be something else. I um, totally st really started to feel like I was not living in this world mm -hmm. when I put the uh, headset on and I was playing in your world yeah. that you designed. So I hope it was a nice world. It was a you. very fun world. <laughs> yeah, it was a very fun world. Yeah. And okay, so. So, part, right, so part, part of the yeah. reasons, you, yes. maybe you felt, and you might not even notice these things because they're pretty subtle, but w your movements were correlated to the visual. So we're, again, creating the statistical correlation for your brain, which makes it feel like it's you. And the visuals, there are 10,000 little particles that sparkle and move and change color. So it's very visually uh, beautiful uh, and with a lot, a lot of data coming into your brain. Um, and also the music was correlated. I don't know if you, did you notice that the music was sort of changing as you were as moving? As you sped up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. So when you move, the, the beat changes based on your movement. So once again, you're feeling that even the music becomes part of you. So. Okay. Okay. So even okay. Pre yeah. pre mute. Let's let's um. Okay. So it, I'm I'm totally with you on the on the cognitive science. You um you you called this again the predictive coding. Pre predictive, predictive coding. coding so, sometimes so predictive you, processing or Bayesian brain. There's a lot Bayesian of different Bayesian brain. There's a lot okay. of different names for this theory. So yeah, because we we love talking about the the lineage of ancestors before us that have provided the insight that we have when we're born. And then, of course, in the immediate indoctrination into all of the words that we use to describe civilization so that we have this cohesive language where we can say chair. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. And then this is, and then so being able to then do something like identify a uh, something as completely novel, like can I bring myself so in the present moment that I forget all of the chairs in the past? Yeah. And that I look at the chair and I'm like, wow. And then you really think Not about really, wow, the wood. You're, you're what? What? <laughs> what? Yeah. You think about the wood, you think about the cloth and like the Like what, no, what, as in what, what? is this even, right? What? Be Damn. so un... Yeah. Damn, that's really raw, yeah, 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 and present, yeah, yeah, without any, yeah. So stuff like that. So then usually sometimes people can only get there maybe if they spend that really long time in VR, a really long time in meditation, a really deep psychedelic experience. But if you can train yourself to always have that awe mentality, you can probably also maybe live healthier and more. Uh, you can definitely be younger from the brain perspective. Um, you can definitely create this plasticity and childlike behavior. This, these are, this is basically what differentiates. As we grow older, we get more of these boxes because we learn more, right? And a lot of the times this learning is reducing our entropy. It's reducing our entropic state in the brain. Um, and children, if we want to be like children again and keep learning, then we, should, we can actually um, trick our brain into being young again in many ways. Damn, and VR does that really well. VR, yeah, it definitely has the capability to do that. Whoa, yeah, that's, that's so interesting. Okay, okay, so, all right, but now um, the martial arts side of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so teach us about that. Um, Teach you martial arts. Okay. okay yeah, so, so where's your center? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> <Right? laughs> martial arts is all about <laughs> maximizing the amount of force you can create in the outside world, Whoa. right? Um, and I'm a, not a very big human, uh, but if you learn how to take all of this body connected to the ground and create very accurate vectors, 
this direction, that direction, um, you can create a lot of force in the world. Uh, and that's very empowering. If you can... Do we mean like a... <gasps> Like type, you know, do we mean like a, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah okay. punch, break, elbow, whatever, whatever you want, right? Taking um, the hard parts of my body against somebody's soft parts. Um, this is oh, martial whoa, arts, Oh, the right? hard, okay, what are the hard parts of our body? Um, I like how you said you find the center and you ground that and then yeah. move it in a vector. Yeah, okay, but what are the hard and yeah, soft parts? Uh, the hard parts of your body, usually this would be one of the hardest parts. Your, he the, your heel, right, the bone of your heel is very hard. Elbows, edges are very hard. Um, some people's heads here are very hard, depending. And again, we're all, we are different bodies, but uh, yeah, basically any, any bone that's wide and has structural integrity is the hard parts of your body. Knows not so much. And you know. <laughs> what were you? What were you learning this uh, for? Um, I was learning this because it was fun and empowering, and mm -hmm. gave me um, an amazing set of tools to feel I have the ability to um, say no. You know, something that a lot of um, women, unfortunately don't have the privilege to be exposed to at a young age, this ability to set boundaries. And mm. like, this is my world. <laughs> um, Damn. And yeah. it, it, it gave me a lot from a very young age, and I'm very grateful for my dad and for my martial arts teacher um, to give me these, these set of tools in a very safe and pl playful way, right? Uh, in a very non-judgmental way, because I was not coordinated. <laughs> I was not very, you know, falling over myself most of the time. Uh, but I stuck to it because it gave me so much and because it gave me, um, also my teacher was very amazing. He was a teacher or so in the wider, you know, word of being a teacher. Uh, and he was probably the first person ever that told me, don't listen to everything I tell you, test, test. That's great. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I come from this long tradition. This is what I was told. This is what I think is correct, but test. Yeah. These things that I did, these tools that I give you. And that's probably the reason why I chose to follow him versus other teachers that were trying to indoctrinate me from a very young age, which is what most education does to you. Do this because we told you to, um, which didn't sit well with me. Versus test it versus for yourself. Versus test it for yourself. You be the scientist. Yes. Uh, what works, maybe this won't work for your body type, right? Yeah. Certain tools may work really well for certain people, but exposure to those tools, that equal exactly. equality of exposure to tools yeah. is so, so important to see and then yeah. people will play and find what brings them meaning, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Um, so then, okay, wh now where was this third piece to the puzzle, this p desire to uh, get into virtual reality, computer science, programming, and Unity, etc. Yeah, honestly, it was just the most practical tool um, that I found to s scale. Um, scale things around body knowledge, scale things around uh, hacking the brain. Like I said, I was doing research into psychedelics, but it's still extremely regulated. Um, I was in the Netherlands, so it's uh, you know more not illegal there, but it's still very hard to do any type of research. You can't really do any business around this versus virtual reality um, that is accessible. Um, and I, so I decided to pivot into that and start creating my own worlds with that. Yeah, sort of Whoa. the missing part. Whoa. Okay. So then, what was the um, what was the quick bit in psychedelics before? Because that has a lot to do with yeah, yeah, awakened futures and also what you're working on too. Yeah. Right so now. again, my my research into psychedelics was taking this predictive coding framework that we've talked about and looking at all the research that was done in psychedelics um, and trying to fit some type of model around. Um, what psychedelics does to your brain, come up, right, what scientists do, come up with a predictable um, a hypothesis that's testable, and then hoping to test it with data. So I think I got to two-thirds of that. I had a model, I had a predictable theory, but I never managed to get access to the actual data. So if there's PhD students out there that want to test my theory, uh, please do. Um, and the basic theory that um, I'm, I'm suggesting is when you look at the receptors that are getting activated, they're called the 5-HT2A receptors, right? 
that psychedelics activate. This is the classical psychedelics. I'm not talking about ketamine or MDMA. Those are total different, different stories. This is psilocybin, But things like LSD. psilocybin, LSD, um, 2CB, um, those type of, of classes of drugs, uh, they're activating the 5-HT2A receptor. When we look at where that receptor is sitting within these uh, neural um, circuits that we have, we see that it's sitting, according to the predictive coding framework, on the top down, on the priors. So on these memories of what a chair is, on the model that you've previously created. Mm. And it's making them hypersensitive. So they're being activated at lower sh thresholds. Mm. Okay, what, what does that basically mean? Is that if usually when you think of a chair, um, this top down framework is very wide. Um, it's a conglomerate of many of these different memories all come together in this very inaccurate top-down model. Psychedelics is lowering the threshold and creating competing models. So you might get various different types of chairs that are much more accurate and much more precise based on specific um, different memories that you've had or different experiences. Um, and that's really changing the whole balance in your brain. So now you're starting to think in much more narrow and detailed predictions. Um, and none of these predictions is really enough to turn off all the information that's coming from your senses. Right? The, this whole predictive coding model means that information coming from your senses is constantly coming up versus these top-down predictions that are trying to turn it off, actually. And only what isn't explained gets moved on into higher and higher brain areas. So basically, uh, your brain is a little bit in a state of overwhelmed prediction error. It's in the state of overwhelming surprise when you're on psychedelics, which probably anybody who's we'll tried agree. might agree yeah, with, yeah, right? Yeah, Pretty yeah. obvious. Yeah. You're like, whoa, so much. So maybe um, it's that this chair maybe looks like a chair icon now, uh, and the door and carpet look like carpet icons and door icons, because it just, I'm not, don't care so much to distinguish between things. That now, now in your right? usual state. In my state. usual state. Yeah, exactly. And then That's I maybe, I maybe double click deeper when I'm in a psychedelic and exactly. I go, all right, where did this, why is this metal shaped this way? Who designed it this way? Where did it come from? Why does the carpet look yeah. like this? The chair? Yeah, a nice yeah, metaphor but. I like giving people is that our perception is a lot like building sand castles, right? The sand is the incoming information that's constantly coming into us, and we have buckets. <laughs> we put at these buckets on top of the sand and we build castles. This is our reality. And psychedelic basically takes these big buckets, turns them, to, turns them into smaller buckets, um, which lets you build a more detailed model of your reality, right? Of your sandcastle. Of your sandcastle, yeah. Oh, but they're smaller buckets <laughs> and there's all this sand, sand. So you have to start like yeah, yeah. Changing things or you're going to get overwhelmed. <laughs> That's like the waterfall yeah. that happens. Yeah, yeah. Right. So Interesting. And then your brain comes up with all these mechanisms to deal with this overwhelming flow of sand. Um, in order to not, not get overwhelmed. It starts rerouting this information, and that's what we see when we start looking into the research uh, in neuroscience, when we're looking at brain scans and EEG scans, we're starting to see other areas of your brain uh, activating and um, taking over other parts of the brain that usually don't deal with this type of information. So your visual input might start actually taking over what you're hearing, and you get all these synesthetic effects, mm, right? Mm. Um, the music might change and your, the, your visuals will change. Uh, so this mm. is one of the reasons. Um, okay. So that was basically the okay, theory. And cool. Yeah, <laughs> if anybody wants to test it out. Yeah, it definitely uh, hit Sarah the, up. Yeah, yeah look for sure. The, read the paper. <laughs> it's your, uh, your email is your first name dot last name at the company site if uh, people want to reach my out. My first, yep, exactly. Okay, yep. cool. Um, and it's... Um, uh, Radix motion motion dot com. com yeah okay so first name dot last name at Radix motion dot com um, okay because maybe it can be yeah maybe some people can help move this yeah along. I would love this to be I came up with a very specific this is what your brain waves should look like if the theory is correct like if you test because we should be able to see this difference that happens between the top down and bottom up um, but I never managed to get the data so. Yeah, so then this combination between that, the martial arts, the psychedelics, and now the virtual reality, how did you end up being like, okay, I'm going to self-teach myself, unity, I have these ideas that I want to build. Tell us about that journey. 
Um, I finished my, my master's program and my professor was like, so you're very creative. And I'm like, yeah, don't worry, I'm not staying in university. <laughs> <laughs> for now. Um, it's, university is very slow. I needed to open the first virtual reality lab, right? They had an o uh, Oculus sitting in a box, but for them, virtual reality was still like three screens because this is how they've done research for the last 10 years. And moving things forward is, uh, requires a lot of bureaucracy and is very slow. Um, and I wanted to just take all this knowledge that I gained and just start playing with it. Yeah. Play, playing is the most fun we can have. Yes, <laughs> and yes. Um, and Unity, honestly, is one of the best tools out there um, to start playing with your ideas. And um, for a year, me and my co-founder, we just had this project. Every two weeks, we would make a new prototype. Wow. And there, it's, that's still out there under Virtual Bytes. If anybody, it's all open source. You can download all the packages that we've made. Things from just having wings and flying, flying <laughs> by flapping your hands, mm -hmm. right? Um, and two things like... Um, having a gravity change and creating a gravity simulator to try to teach you gravity to having like fractals move with your movements any type of crazy idea we could come up with we just like let's try it how does it feel why don't you just give us a quick um teach us a quick bit about um what exactly is happening when you're when you're wearing uh, one of the mm -hmm. like a virtual reality headset plus you're holding what are these called the controllers, controllers yeah. when you're holding the controllers as well and what you what you're like if you're in the game that you built where you're flying mm -hmm. how are there how is the sensing happening to where I go down what well, first of all let's start there how's the sensing happening right. so these ver the there's different types of headsets and different types of hardware but basically um, there are motion sensors uh, they're both gyroscopes that give you rotation and um, there's cameras or there's again two different types of systems. One of them shoots infrared at your, your controllers and then reads them back to sort of know where their position is and the other is the opposite. Your controllers are sending out um, infrared light and they're getting picked up by the sensors. And the so sensors are on the headset? The, nope, the no. sensors uh, only on the very newest there's a new new headset that's coming out at the end of the month that will have the sensors on your headset. Currently, they're still connected to your computer or to the edges of the room. That yeah, you the edges set up. to the room. So you have to set up right now at least one sensing unit or multiple. How two. many? Two. So you there have to sense no two well, sensing. Well, you could do one. It's a bit lower quality. But and that's and that's how the and then the it's infra and it's infrared yeah, for it's detecting all based on, and the gyroscopes. Yeah. Infrared and gyroscopes. Yep. Okay, now teach us about in Unity where you go, okay, then if the controller goes down right. in the 3D space, right. then beat the wings in right. the game and go up. Right. So um, there's a lot of uh, sort of preset packages depending on the hardware that you're using that let you read this motion control, right? They let you get the position. And then you can start looking at things like speed, acceleration, uh, and based on that, you write these algorithms that connect to an animation, right? I can bring in an, uh, uh, that's also what's nice about Unity is that you can bring in these animations that other people, I'm not an artist, my co-founder is a great uh, 3D artist, but I can't <laughs> build any, anything that looks good. You can import um, But you modules. can import, a lot of them, are, these things are for free, and if not, they're very cheap. Like for a few dollars, I could just get an animation of wings. Um, but I could decide if I'm activating it, right, based on these um, movements that I'm picking up. Um, and this you do through code. Um, so, yeah, you just go tuk tuk tuk. Uh, all right. If, if the vector of your velocity uh, on the y axis is okay. equal to something, um, then move the wings with some type of linear algebra. <laughs> um, how much you're moving a thing. Yeah, there's That's a lot of linear algebra and, and matrices. I studied physics before cognitive neuroscience, so I wasn't too afraid of that. Um, excellent. So that's this is where yeah. I wanted to get into the weeds a little bit, and you just did that, which is yeah. excellent. And um, Unity's free as well to yeah. learn. Yeah, Unity's a free. Um, it's free to learn uh, until you're like a big company. So even that's though excellent. we got a little bit of funding, it's we, st we can still use it. So to practice, uh, this is this is a great to practice. This is a great. Um, uh, field to do things like be the first in, be the first yeah. to do something in, yeah. um, kind of like being the first on the moon or on Mars, etc. Yeah. I, I yeah. keep saying, you know, like we've 
we were born too late really to explore the Earth, and we're too early to explore space, but we're just at the right time to explore our brains and our minds, and VR is an amazing uh, tool for that. Good way to put it. Wow, yeah. I love that. Okay, <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so let's let's wander now into um, you're you're building out basically every two weeks. You're building out a new. That was yeah. That that's, that's what that's we were great. doing for yeah. a year. That's yeah. great way to you know to build up skills. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the moment came where you're like, okay, let's do. So there were yeah. of course a few pivoting points, but I was at a movement retreat um, a, exactly a year ago. Or, yep, and. We were doing all these movement exercises, and the teacher there, um, uh, Shira Yaziv, she's called, she's based in the Bay, um, she gives so much visual input on how to move, like, and that was so impactful. Uh, and I really realized, like, VR, this is the power of VR. I can give you these visualizations um, and help you move better and give you these feedback loops. So we started pivoting more and more towards like movement experiences, things that we can connect your visuals with your movements. Um, and we started out with trying to make healthy movement breaks for the workplace. So convince, you know, workplaces to have a VR station and get workers to dance for five minutes a day. That's a great idea. It's a great idea, but me and my co-founder aren't B2B people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is, so we tried and this and doing this sale, it's a long sales cycle, uh, you know. Yeah. And we, part of it was we really realized that to get people to move, the social incentive is really important. Yeah. So as part of what we were building, there was um, a part where you would dance and your friend would receive your dance and could dance with you. They could follow your movements, they could touch you know, your hands and, and you could do a dance together. Um, and people really loved that. Versus the exercises that we were creating that still required a lot. It's very hard to teach people in VR without another person actually being there, mm. right? You tell a person, pick up your hand. Do you know how many variations you're gonna get? People are gonna go this, 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 this. Even if you put, we put like an animation in front of them, a 3D, to do the thing with them. They were not doing the movements we wanted them to do. Um, so we sort of decided for now to, to shelve that, even though I still think it's a great mm -hmm. idea, but it requires so much more research. Um, and to take the things that were working very well and were very fun, which was the, the this element of dancing together, um, and make it something that is just accessible everywhere. It doesn't need to be just a B2B thing. You're like, yeah, if people want to bring it to their workplace, great, yes. and, and do these dancing things. Um, and, and mostly it's really important to us to offer um, an alternative to all the violent uh, games out there. And, yeah. you know, like I do martial arts, I violence is a game I play, yeah? Yes. Uh, but I think there should be other alternatives. Um, yeah. And in VR, what I'm mostly seeing is a lot, a lot of shooter games, a lot of violent games, and there's so much more we can be doing with this technology. So that's a big part of what's important for us. A lot of awareness expansion that's yep. so possible with yep. this technology. Yep. Okay, so then how about, um, was Mu the first thing that you guys decided that you wanted? Mu was the first thing we managed to get funding for. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a big thing. Because the moment you, we can get funding for, we could, um, add more people on the team and actually build, cool. build it out to the level of our product um, versus our prototypes that we were playing with before. Okay, so n so now then, um, so the team's a couple people then. Yeah. It's a couple people on the team. And then now let's go ahead and drop into Mew. So, okay, let's, let's start talking about Mew and we'll have these visuals embedded as we discuss. But now, first of all, let's talk about how the vision for the idea as well as what exactly um, you hope that people take away from the experience. Yeah, so we had a prototype before we got some funding, but the moment we got some money, uh, we invited the most talented people we knew of, some of which we were just following on Twitter. Yeah, one of them was called Isaac Cohen, Kabibo. Uh, we literally bugged him like, ah. and he's seen one of our prototypes before, so he was really actually excited to work with us. And um, we brought them this team. Um, Chris Beasley is another um, person that's very, she has an Embodied Realities podcast and has done a lot, a lot of research into how to create non-addictive healthy technologies. So we brought her on too. Um, and we have a musician, uh, Nico, 
Uh, and another, I'm just mentioning everyone, otherwise they'll shoot me. At Lee, another uh, amazing engineer that uh, created a lot of very embodied and um, emotional experiences in VR too. Um, and my co-founder, Matt. So we brought them on for a two-day hackathon. Like, guys, Damn. this is our prototype, but you know, you have so much talent. How can we get your input? What do we want to build together? Who wants to do what? Um, discussing like possibilities what can we do with the scope of money that we had because you know we are so care about our workers we don't want to like they're not slaves and Absolutely. what part of um part of my want like trying to make a company is hard yeah. <laughs> it's like not something mm. i thought i would do in my life yeah. but um trying to create a company that the motivation for me is to try to create a different type of culture where people aren't slaves that where they can bring their true creativity and true passion. And I think that would create a much better product and also a much better feedback loop into their lives. Um, I don't want them to feel like they they have to do something because of the money. This yeah. is personally for me like a, a mission. Um, I think we, we follow a similar paradigm and I think if more people around the world followed that paradigm of ideas going through them and having a family mentality with the with the global village in general, yeah, um, yeah I think we would get a lot further together. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think we'd have a lot less issues around burnout and depression and yeah. Um, Creative ideas welcomed at the table. That's that's a huge. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So so that's basically what we did um, for. for and again, we didn't have a lot of money, so we had like two days where we could like brainstorm on this and that and what is uh, people's sort of unique talents, um, along with these constrictions. Constrictions can be a great tool for creativity. Actually, there's yeah. books on that. Totally. Um, and then we started. Building um, and you did a hackathon. That's a constriction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two days. And then and then we started building separately with communicating and a lot of GitHub <laughs> nightmare, right? Like sharing code bases is pretty difficult. Yes. yes. Um, and then when Isaac had a bit of a prototype, we actually went. He lives uh, in an amazing um, house, like in the forest somewhere. So we did another uh, three-day hackath hackathon at his place, um, adapting and changing and learning um, his his system and um, sort of bringing it all together. And I mean, we're still developing and bug fixing, <laughs> but that was the process. And then, and then, okay. So then, what were what were the discussions around the vision? What did you want to achieve with this? Yes. Yeah, so we wanted to achieve. I have three points from this VR system: head and two hands. Mm -hmm. I wanted to achieve something that is both visually um, stunning, the wow effect, yeah, yeah, and has an emotional connection that you see and you're like, you feel something. It yeah. moves you. Um, and that, that then you can send it, right? This is sort of the back end, the yes. server side yes, um, yes. that we, we built out to be able to share these things. For me, having just uh, um, a lot of, uh, you know, it can be used also as a creation tool. You're just there creating your memes and you get them to your cell phone. It's really cool. Use this instead of Bitmoji. You have your own Bitmojis that you made. It's, it's super cool. But for me, I really wanted the the emotional connection to be there when you receive one of these things. I wanted you to be able to, to like touch it. I wanted you to be able to record um, your family's movements. Like m my dad lives really far away. He doesn't have a yard, but he's coming to visit me next week. I'm gonna record his hug and then it's mine. You know, he can be in the other side of the world asleep, but if I really miss him, I can go in there and like receive his hug. Or uh, one of my partners like made a, a it's really funny dance for me, and if I'm sad, I go in there. I can really experience it much more than like a video or 2D thing because I can I can touch it, I can interact with it, mm. um, and it tricks my brain to feeling that he's there with me for a little bit. So that's, that's sort of what we were going Whoa. for. Whoa! Yeah. So <laughs> there's there's so, so much, much here. Yeah. 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 So so the way that. Um, there's such interesting ways to do things like potentially capture uh, in like both mind files of people as well as like doing volumetric yeah. captures of people and then doing things like um, in 3D space, throwing it on and hanging out with your mom or your dad that may have even passed. Yeah. Um, that you yep. could, yeah, that you can do things like um, 
uh, like you said, just when you're in a state that you want to engage with something that you find to be um, that c calming or you're tranquil, whatever it may be that can take you potentially out of a depressed or anxious state. Yeah, there's such interesting potentials with this. Um, also, okay, within Mu, you said that you wanted something that was that used the the the, the head and the two arms that was visually stunning, um, that was emotionally, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, the, um, captivating, and also that was shareable. And I like I like those things together. And actually, within the game, uh, immediately when I had. M do you call it Mew? The part, the the character is it yourself? Is it a reflection of you? What do you call that? That that avatar? Yeah, Mew. We call it the you whole call thing that like Mew. Mew. It's okay, like our so Mews so Mew. Yeah, yeah. So this <laughs> this reflection, our creature friend, the puppet creature self, friend, so yeah. puppet self. This 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 immediate uh, mirroring that you get of yourself is very powerful. Yeah. First of all, it it gives you that that. Even though you guys created it, I still feel like a creator. Yeah, yeah that like, was a yeah. very important part. A huge part, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and and it's in the the learning curve is so little because all I have to do is move yeah. for there to be the yeah. instant feedback yeah. of I'm creating. Mm -hmm. That's really powerful. Yeah. yeah. And okay. And so then. Yeah, and so glad then. it worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hey, do you wanna? Uh, like we worked. So, we worked really hard. So I've already yeah, yeah, that this good. was your experience. Good. Good. And and also, um, you know, as you guys need, we can help with you know doing that B two B thing that you yeah, yeah we we're, we 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 like helping people that we believe in. So mm -hmm. so to, for you guys to actually be able to. Um, you know, to, to take this off with these powerful testimonials or these powerful, um, uh, also just larger organizations that believe in you that want mm -hmm. their potentially yeah. their employees to be using it, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. So, okay, then uh, not only is there that first emotional connection and it's as simple as movement to make it move, but then you have, what did you call the, the particle... 10,000 Yeah, particle we have thing. a particle system that's a simulation, right? It's actually being real-time simulated based on your movements. So, and that's super cool because the moment you explode, the velocity of your movements affects these particles, changes their color, they expand further away. Um, so all these very crazy physics simulations uh, that are connected to your movements. Um, that's why simulations is like great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the, so, the, you call, so you call this like a, is this like a particle s suit? It's kind of like a... That's a good word. We could call it a particle suit. Okay. I'm all for it. All right, let's call it a particle suit. We're calling suit it like another now. layer. There's an extra layer. layer. You have an avatar skin layer, and yes. on top of this layer, you have your particle layer. Cool. So there's a particle layer on top of the avatar layer, and then that particle layer is... If if you're still, it's still, yeah. it's st but it still has that tiny has a little bit of randomness. Ha a little and bit we, of randomness. And the, there's a lot of parameters we can play with. The user can play with. Play with. There's a whole right change dashboard. Your avatar dashboard. Okay, so yeah. then that dashboard was also very cool. So not only are you you start it kind of like a fire avatar. Yeah. So we have so that's another thing we really brainstormed around a lot. What do we start with? We have very few um, like. We couldn't. We would love to give people a hundred different templates or ten different templates. Uh, although choice overload is a real problem too. Yeah. So we didn't. Totally. We actually didn't want to choice overload people, but we wanted what were the two or three basic filters that we could give people to start out with. Uh, and after a lot of discussion, and I think like again, Chris Beasley was very impactful on her um, understanding of embodiment, and we really focused on these different body sensations that we have, and we went with explosive and peaceful as the two first sort of filters that you have. That's great. Um, in which your movements and the sound and the visuals are very, very different. Um, but potentially we would love to keep building more and more of these different types of filters that you explore and communicate your sadness, your happiness, um, various you know different types of emotional states but the simple ones really explode which we did with a fire avatar and peaceful which is like blue colors and rainbow rainbowy blue yes 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 okay so, so that's yeah so more in in future is to add different um ways to sense uh, uh to, to 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 have the person's state that they're in and the way they're expressing themselves uh, change the music, change the visuals of, of yeah, the yeah. particle suit, mm -hmm. etc. Um, within the 
the, the, this is, I, I find this part to be yeah. really cool. Um, yes, you found a way to make it so that the more that I exploded, yeah. the faster that I yeah. moved, the more the particle layer just, <laughs> just yeah, 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 explodes. And then when I move my hand back, it kind of like comes, comes back. back. And it's, that part's so cool that you can create with motion like that. And then, of course, there were the parts where I, you know, where I came in really close to the to the face. You were very brave. A lot of people don't do that, really. That was very. A lot of people are like, "Whoa, this is." And you were just like immediately, "What? Ooh, I want to get so close." <laughs> oh, to you. Was I great. was looking, looking at the, the eyes. eyes. Yeah, yeah. So we, yeah. this is a big issue. We keep talking about it. What are we doing with these eyes? Currently, it doesn't. It's just one mesh with particles, because I, I, the eyes are in. They're somewhat so important that. I almost don't really know how to do them well, yeah. right? And I don't want to give people a cop out or a thing that doesn't represent eyes. Yeah. Like human eyes are so impactful for us yeah. that I feel if I can't give them well, I might as well not give them <laughs> in some ways. Um, I agree with what you just said. Something cool could be maybe the earth, or you know, me, you know, but not potentially in a. Like, like having a your planets, eye. or what, maybe mean, like, yeah, potentially. That's a cool idea. Could be yeah. Yeah, having different. Sp so we were playing with like different sp different types of sparks that come from your eyes or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, like the full globe, the full, the full Earth. Earth globe. Th so no like white like art. Yeah. yeah, just the full globe. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, that's easily Stuff we like could that, try. Yeah. We could try that. Just yeah. great idea. It's just what what, what gets people's awareness expanded yeah. the most? Like yeah. I look at the eyes and I see it, Earth. Earth. That's a great idea. I love it actually. Um, the things are also with eyes is the eye movement, right? And that is very hard to give, I mean, impossible to give accurately. Um, for and now. For now. Until, yeah, we're getting the next next generation, we're going to have um, um, sensors that will tell us where people are looking at. Um, but I think that the slight danger in that is um, eyes that are just staring at you, right? They feel somewhat uncomfortable. But then creating false blinks, which is what, for instance, the Facebook thing um, VR avatars do. They just blink whenever they want to. Uh, and then when you're actually sort of taking your own selfies and your avatars are blinking, your brain goes a bit crazy and your eyes start blinking because you see your mirrored self blink, but you're not blinking. And again, this predict predictive coding thing says, oh, two different senses are giving me different information. That can't be. We need to we need to get these senses together. So your brain, you either break break that immersiveness, or your brain actually starts blinking. I start blinking. Interesting. Um, so the, you need to make it the real, so that as so real we need to possible. make it. Yes. Yeah, so generally, the philosophy of what we're building is we use the real data, or we don't use it at all. We yeah, don't give right. people false feedback. Yes. Uh, yes. We take the real data and we expand, we augment the feedback on it, but we don't fill in the gaps with noise. That's, I don't want to give brains false knowledge, basically. And you'll kick people out of the experience, like you exactly. just said, that, and, exactly. and it doesn't feel as real in your whole thing as that you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Now, now, within the, um, the dashboard, I really like the dashboard a lot. Yeah. So, so, at, so when I, like there's a couple things happening here, you know, I, I hit record, so I'm starting to do the social aspect to this where I'm recording it so I can be waving hi, I can be giving a hug, I can be going crazy, whatever. And then I'm sending that to myself and sending it to other people, they can save it, etc. go relive it in the moment. But I'm also doing things like starting with this fire, which I really like, and then um, that that's like a gradient from something like yellow to orange to red or something like that. And then then there's the dashboard, which is both doing things like changing the colors of the particle layer to something like rainbow, which was so fun to play with a rainbow. I love that as well. But then there's also the, uh, what is it, the size of the particles, right? The size of the particles. There's the size of the whole avatar, which I'm not sure you played with, but you can turn yourself into a god, like uh, a That's giant huge. sculpture of 10 meters that you're now interacting with. <laughs> and uh, and scale for brains is also, v it's very impactful. If, if something's big, you're immediately small. It turns you back into your child self more. So there's a lot of play you can do in that. And there's also a n these noise functions that we can put on your skin that 
turn you into a very abstract blobby or jerky. So I don't think you even, yeah, lots of different types of parameters that you can explore basically. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I saw at the very beginning you had in the loading, uh, mm -hmm. you had what people sometimes reference to as uh, like non-symbolic geometry oh, interesting. happening. That word. Because then my brain, when I saw your basically what was a massive rainbow yeah, of party. like mm -hmm. of stuff that I couldn't say was something, yeah. um, I was like, that's cool because now I'm not labeling things immediately. And so yeah. that that was powerful. So if you can yeah, also do things in the experience like turn. It's strange because you, for the mirror effect, for me to still feel like that avatar is like me in the mirror, yeah. uh, for it to have a head, yeah. arms, yeah. a body, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Because, But then if it turns into something that doesn't necessarily look like a human, yeah. then maybe I, what maybe. is it then? Maybe. Um, but we want to give people the choice. The choice to, yeah. to, to, to you can turn. turn yeah. So you can turn off your avatar and just stay with the particles. And then you can expand the particles and then you're just in a cloud of particles that you're right. It's not the, the, the connections there run in some ways deeper and stranger. Of this is still giving you feedback. It's still moving, but it's not a human anymore. <laughs> you can become one of the things, and this is me and my co-founder, we just love doing. We just put only the particles and that's it. We're like 10,000 fireflies and we're just dancing in there, turning our low-level brain into 10,000 fireflies. Yeah. Um, and if that's not, you know, it's really the closest ex psychedelic experience with like no drugs <laughs> involved. <laughs> Um, and then what are you guys thinking now? Like, what are the next steps for you? You know, how do you actually sustain a company like this? So how do you yeah. guys make money, all this stuff? So first of all, we're, we need to be out there, right? We're trying to get our uh, prototype out first into test users and then onto the VR stores so people can download them and really building a, a community that wants to start exploring and communicating with each other and this new form of communication. It is, um, it's a new language. We don't want to be the ones building it alone. We want people to build this so we can communicate with each other in these very new and strange ways. Uh, so that's basically what we're, we're, our focus is, like getting out there, get people to, to start playing with it. And then what are the major stores? The Steam store? Steam and Oculus store. And Oculus yeah. store. Yeah, we're also looking stores. into Robin, who is our selectoring here. Yeah. So he's having some type of platform for VR for transformational uh, uses. So cool. Um, okay. So that might be it. And then, and then do people pay like 10 bucks or 15 bucks? So we want this to be free. As yeah. a me messenger platform, especially at the first stage of that it's in now, um, we want just we want people to have access to it and and just gain um, users and for gain now. Users. Yeah. Um, later on, we're thinking of right having a type of gifting economy in there. So if you know your friend really likes football or baseball, you can have these virtual items that you can literally throw at your friend, right? And they can receive and they can become part of their like uh, toy chest. Um, sure, of sure. items that they can digitally um, uh, play with and move with, things that again are sort of movement based. Um, or if we build uh, specific avatars, for instance, we're, I'm really trying to get a tail that works. Mm. So um, maybe uh, m microtransactions um, for very specific filters and avatars that people might want to explore. And we're also looking into, avatar, uh, into avenues of um, connecting with um, musicians and creators and dancers that might want to use this as a platform for their creation. So, right, if you're um, you want to make a music video that's interactive and people can actually dance with you, um, wouldn't it be really really cool um, to do that? And so we're, just, we're we're trying to contact these types of artists and musicians that might want to. Um, mm. um, do this in our platform. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the social side of the platform is huge. It's cool that you guys are launching it off for free. Um, now, where is the future of all of this technology heading? The cognitive science side of this, the movement side of it, the psychedelic side, the VR side, where are all these things converging? Where do you see it going? Um, 
I see going into letting people be strange finally like mm. letting go of a lot of these social constricting norms that most of us grew up with and letting them connect on deeper levels of what is the weird inside of you like so much of social media is disastrous to our well-being and to our uh, feeling of empowerment because we're forced into looking cute and perfect all the time um, right in this whole like selfie I need to be happy and can only show happiness I can only show my cute side uh, and I would really like this to be the platform that releases us from this that lets us be particles that lets us be fire that lets us be weird jaggedy pain you know like let us understand each other on that level um, that's what I would hope for this to become yeah that was so cool, Sarah. Yeah, I'm all about that. I'm all about weirdness, eccentricity, yeah. idiosyncrasies being unleashed. I'm all about that. The taboo-ness that culture has created that is inhibiting people's creative expressions is nonsense. Yeah. And it's harmful, actually, in the social media culture that we have right now. Yeah, it's sometimes, occasionally, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll post a photo of myself like, you know, like that, and I'll just be like, I'll be like, that's right. Because I don't subscribe to yeah. that, yeah. yeah, and it's it's because it's and it can entice other people to want to take, um, you know, post photos themselves in very weird yeah. or looking, yeah, exactly, um, yeah. So, I, I, brave. <laughs> <That's> brave. <laughs> you know, we, there's a good yeah. amount of people that are starting to do it, and I I love that aspect mm -hmm. to it. Um, if if we could use VR to unleash ourselves fully in our most uh, weird ways. Uh, that's a that's a great and share that that's that's a great way to shatter some of those taboos um, Okay, let's ask you a couple of the questions that we ask on the way out of the show the first one is are we in a simulation? Oof. Hmm. So My best estimate would be yes However, I think it's a type of physics-based simulation, and we are the algae. Consciousness is a manufactured algae and a very large-scale simulation that has nothing to do with us. This is my, my perspective. Unpack that a little more for us. <laughs> okay. Um, so, quantum mechanics, right? This, it's, if I were to design a system that's doesn't, that's trying to minimize the amount of data being used, guess what? I would only make that system get actual points in space and time if you check that, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> and this is basically what <laughs> quantum, anyth everything we know about quantum mechanics is telling us that um, we have these wave functions, statistical wave functions that don't actually collapse into a decision until they're being checked. Um, which for me is a very strong indication that this is a simulation. Um, and again, a simulation on the lower levels of quantum mechanics. Now the fact that this simulation somehow got life, right? Entropy managed to, we managed to take this energy from the sun and heat and molecules were created. I think this is, a, yeah, this is the, the, the algae that was magically created in, in the simulation and um, so I, I don't think we are the important part of the universe, let's put it this way. I don't think this was a simulation that was created for our brains or something like that. That I think some simulation theories are, are into that. Um, what is the point then? Points, there, there's many points. The points is what you choose to do with this allotted time you have. Um, if it's not made as, for us. Is the point of who? For, of the simulation itself? Sure, sure. Whatever created, you know, there were such um, large amounts of energy and in going into whatever was created that I, I, there, I'm not going to delude myself that I have the ability to understand. Uh, sure, sure. The rendering is fascinating exactly. stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, exactly. Yeah, rendering, exactly. Yeah, that's fascinating <laughs> And when stuff. you do things with VR and start to create yeah. simulations <laughs> yeah. Yourself, in VR, yeah. you're starting to realize, like, hmm, okay, the math, this is... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. How about the second question is, what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? Mm. 
so d- can I be morbid? For, you can do whatever so my, you want. So my brain, like the first thing that comes out is death, right? And tell us why. Um, it's the, first of all, it's the great equator of life, right? Um, we're all gonna die. It's the, it's the, an ending, and there's something ver- the, the final, the finality of it. I see as very beautiful. It's almost like a mathematical um, singularity, right? We're all gonna get to it. This black hole, and for some reason, my brain thinks that that's beautiful. Weird thing, maybe. But I, I, I like that a lot too, yeah. I think, I'm curious to quickly hear your perspective on this. I, some, some of us say that the finality of life, that we are going to die, the, the, that this is finite, that that is what gives us meaning to do things in the 80 year period that we have here. Otherwise, what, 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 what are your thoughts about that? Um, I think as long as you can uh, keep your brain young, which some people stop doing that when they're 20, then it doesn't have to be, there, there doesn't have to be that limitation. So I wouldn't say that's uh, um, the motivating force for me. I think you, it could, as long as there's novelty in the universe and my brain stays young and doesn't put these giant buckets and thinks, oh, I've seen everything, I know everything, then you would find ways to go on forever. And that loops us all the way to what you yeah, said. Exactly. Yeah, 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 at the very beginning, yeah. With, yeah the sand and, and also with psychedelics, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The smaller bucket to make the capitals. It was, it was some good stuff. I, this episode has been great, Sarah. I really, I really appreciate you yeah, coming on the welcome. show. Mm-hmm. This has been fun. super fun, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And, huge, and also huge shout out to what you've been building. Um, R- Radix. Radix, Radix Motion. Radix Motion can be found at radixmotion.com, R-A-D-I-X motion.com. Also, um, check out the other links below in the bio uh, to Sarah as well. Check her workout. And also, shout out to everyone for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know your thoughts with your, and share your thoughts also with your friends, your coworkers, families, online on social media about what it's like merging our realities with VR. Go and start talking about it more. And, and try it. And try it, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, get out to the VR uh, and AR centers that are near you mm-hmm. as much as you can, or even the, 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 the um, like Best Buys, like people, places like that sometimes have these yeah, things Yeah, 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 you can try them out. A lot of uh, co-hacking, um, like um, hacking, hacker spaces have them um, if you don't want to. Even buy like, it. yeah, just reaching out to people Friends. nearby, yeah, th- and just being like, who has one? Like, let me get to use one yeah. as soon as possible. I totally agree <laughs> with that. Be, be the gods, yeah, be the designers. It's, it's crazy how cool that part is about it. Also, check out the links in the bio to consciousness hacking and to simulation. Support the artists, entrepreneurs, and organizations around the world that you believe in. And lastly, go and build the future. Manifest your dreams into the world. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace.